RTX Titan, RTX 4080, and RTX 4070 were all just leaked. Let's talk about them. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap. If you're looking for a better alternative to eBay with lower fees and better protection, make sure to check out RGB Swap linked in the description below. Alright, so I got a ton of leaked information to go over with you guys today when it comes to Nvidia's next generation Lovelace RTX 40 series GPUs, and all this information is going to come from the Twitter leaker Comp87Kimi over on Twitter. Let's go ahead and take a look at what he had to say about all this stuff, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. So starting off with the RTX 4090 Ti or possibly Titan, here's what he had to say. Quote, in fact, there's another full fat 80102 SKU with 900 watt TGP, 48 gigabytes of 24 gigabits per second, GDDR6X, 2 times 16 pin, and higher frequency. But nobody knows whether it'll become an actual product because the test board of 8102 has more than two 16 pin connectors, so everything is possible. Okay, so before we go ahead and move on to any other leaked information, we really gotta break this one down because he does appear to be talking about, yes, what could potentially be the RTX 4090 Ti or possibly even RTX Titan. In fact, guys, if this thing does end up actually releasing, I wouldn't be too surprised if Nvidia does end up rolling out the Titan name once again. But before we talk about how powerful this GPU is really going to be, let's go ahead and talk about the power draw and just how absurd this really is. Because 900 watts in a single GPU is absolutely absurd. Now, we've all heard the leaked information of a potential 600 watt Founders Edition being produced and potentially even upwards of 800 watts for certain. AIB models with like dual 16 pin connectors but 900 watts for like some sort of reference Titan model is just getting ludicrous because honestly guys in my personal opinion from someone who's ran a thousand watt BIOS and someone who's ran you know 3080 Ti's and 3090's and all these super high wattage parts I can go ahead and tell you guys that for me I'm gonna have to say that around 500 watts is the limit of what's reasonably practical so pushing up to 600 watts is definitely gonna be in my opinion the limit of what you're gonna be able to reasonably actually be able to cool with an air cooler. You go beyond 600 watts and you're definitely going to need some sort of water cooling. I mean, even if they go ahead and use like liquid metal and vapor chambers and they double the fin density of what's on the current RTX 3090 Founders Edition cooler, which is already a really great cooler, even that is going to struggle to cool something that's over, you know, 800 watts. So in my opinion, guys, this is probably just going to be some sort of test board that they're working on and I don't think you're going to actually see a 900 watt GPU. However, that isn't to say that there isn't going to be be an RTX Titan or 4090 Ti that is going to draw an absurd amount of power. 600 watts is probably going to be the limit in my opinion, but even that is probably going to be something that's going to be labeled a 90 Ti or Titan level type of GPU, and it could potentially actually have spikes that yes, do exceed 800 or 900 watts, uh, you know, for a split second, and you definitely are going to need probably a new ATX 3.0 type of power supply if you're going to be wanting to run this GPU, because yeah, you're going to need a very, very powerful type of power supply. And in fact, I've actually talked about this before with the RTX 4090 Ti. I actually did speculate basically a lot of the same things that Comp 7 Kimi has been saying before. If we go ahead and take a look at the chart that I put together here, we can see that, yeah, over all the way back in March, I did speculate that the full fat 8102 GPU with 18,432 CUDA cores would roughly probably have, you know, 24 gigabytes of G6X plus, although he's saying 48 gigabytes now. So yeah, that definitely would, in my opinion, be labeled a Titan level GPU and not a 90 Ti if they do go ahead and put that much memory on it because that is going to be somewhat of a professional card at that point. Now, I did also speculate it's going to have the same 384-bit bus. Uh, a lot of this information was uh, some data mined leaks that were shown online. So a lot of the information I'm going over here is actually partially confirmed. 96 megabytes of cache. I'm actually speculating it will be roughly double the amount of performance on the RTX 3090. And I was also speculating it would probably have boost clock somewhere around 2.4 gigahertz. Now, he's saying that the memory is going to be G6 X still uh, and honestly I was speculating that as well he's saying 24 gigabits per second that makes a lot of sense to me so yeah this is kind of all lining up with stuff that I've been saying for a little while here and it does make a lot of sense the only thing that doesn't make sense once again is that ridiculous power draw I think that the card that we're going to be talking about here is going to be the Titan and it is going to be the top end GPU but it's not going to draw 900 watts it's probably going to draw 600 watts but even that is already getting a little bit ridiculous and the people who are going to be looking at this card are definitely going to 
going to be people who are going to be playing games at like 4K with ray tracing or 4K 240 hertz or like 1440p 360 hertz. This is going to be a card for people who want absolutely no compromises whatsoever and are going to be willing to run their AC basically all year round because that's going to be a very expensive card to run. I mean, not only are you going to be paying the power bill on the card itself, but you're also going to be paying the power bill of running your AC basically constantly anytime you're using your GPU. And trust me, it's going to get hot, it's going to get uncomfortable, or it's going to get very, very expensive. So honestly, for the vast majority of gamers, as you know, just incredible as this card really is, I'm probably going to recommend that most people probably don't look at like the RTX Titan or even RTX 4090 because these cards are going to draw so much power. It's just going to be a little bit ridiculous. Uh, for me personally, I'm actually looking forward to the RTX 4080. And speaking of the RTX 4080, we have yet another leak from the prominent leaker Comp 87 Kimi about the RTX 4080 and it actually confirms a lot of stuff that I've been talking about once again so let's go ahead and take a look at what he had to say about the 4080 and the 4070. And according to Comp 87 Kimi he says quote RTX 4080 will use 8103 chips built with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X and will have a similar TGP to the GA102. The RTX 4070 will use 8104 chips built with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 and have 300 watts for its TGP. Both of them have haven't started testing it, but soon do them. And honestly, this makes a whole lot of sense to me because all the way back in March, once again, when I put together this chart, let's take a look this time at the RTX 4080. I was one of the very few people who said that the RTX 4080 is very likely going to be produced on the 8103 chip because I took a look at the leaked information that was put online and I was like, you know what? Honestly, to move to a 12 gigabyte card from a 10 gigabyte card just doesn't seem like enough. And I think NVIDIA is going to have to move to 16 gigabytes at a minimum if they want to make the RTX 4080. And so that gives them basically two options. The first option is they go ahead and produce it on the 8102 chip and that'll give them 20 gigabytes of VRAM but honestly that's going to be needlessly expensive and it's going to get them just a little bit too close in my opinion to the 4080 Ti, 4090 and 4090 Ti or even Titan kind of a similar situation that we have now where the RTX 3080 is just way too close to the RTX 3090 and now that you know the stock is actually coming in and people are able to buy whatever card that they want a lot of people are starting to avoid cards like the 3090, 3080 Ti or even 3080 12 gigabyte because they're all so close to the RTX 3080 that it's just really not much sense to upsell someone on something a little bit more performance for way, way more money. So I figure that NVIDIA is probably going to go the second route, which is going to be to produce it on the 8103. It's still going to give them plenty of VRAM, 16 gigabytes. It's going to be a massive upgrade over the 10 on the current RTX 3080, but it's also still going to be a massive improvement in terms of performance, but it's still going to leave a lot of room on the table to push to the RTX 4080 Ti, RTX 4090, 4090 Ti, or even Titan. There's just a lot more performance left in the tank there, and there's going to be a little bit bigger of a gap next time around so that NVIDIA can go ahead and upsell a lot more people on something like maybe an RTX 4080 Ti or 4090. Now, I'll go into more you know, details on specs and stuff like that in a later video, maybe next week. So if you're not subscribed and you want to see more information about that, make sure you're subscribed because I will definitely be going over that. But now let's quickly go ahead and take a look at the RTX 4070 because once again here, we have something that kind of confirms stuff I've been talking about here where the RTX 4070 70, at least according to Cop 87 Kimi, is going to be on the 8104. A lot of people gave me flack for this one as well, but it makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, here we're probably talking 7,680 cores in terms of performance, probably around at least 15% more than RTX 3090, with a slightly higher boost clock of around 2.35 gigahertz and 12 gigabytes of what I originally suspected to be G6X+, Plus. but he's now saying is just going to be regular G6, and honestly with the huge improvement of cache, I could definitely see that being the case. So there you go. Uh, the only other thing I didn't mention is that apparently, yeah, 300 watts on that thing is kind of ridiculous for a 70 class card, but it looks like next generation, all cards are just going to draw more power. So get ready. You're going to need a new power supply soon. However, maybe don't buy a new power supply right now. Wait for those new ATX 3.0 power supplies as those definitely will be able to handle the loads much, much better. And we'll have the new connectors that can drop to 600 watts on one cable. But overall, yeah, they're going to be drawing a lot of power. They're going to be very powerful. And we're just going to have to wait and see, you know, whether or not Nvidia or AMD is able to take the performance crown. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think AMD or NVIDIA will actually take the performance crown next generation? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.